Welcome to the Pew Pew. That's Pew. The it's cold version. The sick ward edition. Michael and I are both sick. Yeah. <laughs> and we're talking rhinoviruses <laughs> and flus, influenza, and rhinovirus. Not, not any other kind of sickness. Not mental disorders. <laughs> right. That, that, that's another episode. <laughs> A much, much longer episode. No, I don't think I, I think I could deal with all of my um, mental illness in less than less than five minutes. Okay, well, of course, that's what everyone with your condition says. <laughs> 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 because you have an impaired sense of the passage of time. No, it's because I'm able to delude myself into believing that I have nothing wrong with me. <laughs> okay, so we're both sicky, sicky. <laughs> I got the flu. Did you, catch, got, did you catch that in well, LA? Was it Keoki biological it. warfare from the protesters at your party? Kyoki got it first, and then L dot got it, and then and I got it, and now Jay's got it, and everybody's got it. So um, one big unhappy family. Yes, and we're all sick, very sick. <laughs> I'm the only one in my household who's sick. For now, when did you get yours? I got it when I was in Greece. Oh, oh. <laughs> right. oh. exactly. Oh. <laughs> so, did you have? Do you have to? Um, do you have to uh, deal with that now? Um, no, I'm just dealing with runny nose, coughing. I mean, like itchy eyes. You don't, you don't have to deal with the you know, shame of the shame of what? You know, going to Greece and coming home with AIDS or something. <laughs> <laughs> sexually transmitted disease. I did not catch a sexually transmitted disease. That's sexually <laughs> transmitted disease. That okay. I know of. Okay. I well. guess that will remain to be seen. Mm. Or okay. felt. So, LA was um, great. Well, for all of you who <coughs> didn't yeah, read, you give, uh, give them set, set didn't up, read the story. internet, Michael had a party in LA. We actually talked about it in one of our previous episodes. And uh, Ernie was supposed to be at that party. Yes, but the protesters uh, derailed that plan. Sort of. I mean, I don't see what one had to do with the other. Well, I, I can tell you. Oh, tell me. Okay, well, this is according to the promoter. That, yeah, Daddy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, according to the promoter, the, uh, you know, this guy decided to start a change.org petition against the party that Michael was going to be at because uh, he felt that young, impressionable LGBTQ clubbers were endangered by the idea of being in the same club with you. So the protest worked because it scared the club that he had originally booked the party at and they canceled the party. So then he had to find another club. And, right, the promoter had to find another club to have the party in. And at the last minute, the promoter told me that because he had to find a different club, it shrank his budget and then he could no longer afford to have me come. Well, how did it shrink his budget though? I don't know. I. I didn't get into those details. But that's, what, that's the part I'm saying I don't understand. Because well, the party was packed. It was packed. You couldn't walk through the club. It was like so crowded. And um, if anything, that petition was the best thing that I, I, could yeah, have happened. And it was very expensive to get in. Everybody was paying. So like, you know, even Daniel DeCrisco and people like that were paying. Even people on the guest list were demanding to pay mm -hmm. um, and to so protest the protesters. How, but, um, but yeah, so, um, and Miss Kitten was really great. She performed. I've got footage of that. Can we show that? Um, you can, yep. Sure can. I mean, without being demonetized. No, we will be demonetized, but hey, we're not making money anyway, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, that's, this, this will be a judgment call in your end, if you I want. believe Miss Kitten is DJing this weekend in New York, too. Where? At, in Brooklyn, at Good Room. Oh, well, um, uh, she was great um, at, 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 um, at the resident in Los Angeles. And um, so, yeah, so we, we were staying at a hotel called The Line. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll show you the card. We'll show you the, the card from the Now, line. this was the weekend before Halloween. Yes. And, um, I mean, w w this hotel, everybody, would, before we got there... So you went to L.A. on a Thursday. I believe it was Thursday that you went. Yeah, but right? we didn't arrive until, like, uh, very late. Like, 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 I think we got there at, like, four in the morning or something. Oh, okay. Um, and, um, <coughs> so Friday we had, and then, and then uh, Saturday. Um, and, um... When was the party? What was it? Friday. Friday or night. Okay. Yeah. And Saturday. And and uh, everybody was telling us when we were saying where we were saying. They said, "Oh, we hear the rooms are really weird there." 
the rooms are very weird. At the line? Yes. Um, they, it's kind of a new hotel, and it's a trendy hotel. Like the what scale. part of LA was it in? Um, Koreatown. Oh, okay. That's a fun area. It was, um, it was, um, like a new hotel, kind of, but it was an artsy hotel, like the, like the Standard or something, and the rooms were done by different artists and, and things. And, um, but the rooms were just very weird, like there were no beds in our room. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> um, and we had to call downstairs you were there to host a party. Who needs to well, sleep? Well, we had to call downstairs to get air mattresses uh, set up, and they're like beds in a hotel room. <laughs> and um, so we, we did get the beds up, and um, you know I don't care as I kind of as long as it's a fun place and like you know everything's free and we're being right. paid. Do yeah, I don't care, um, but. Um, but yeah, it was just weird that there was no bed. And the room was like, I had thought... Are you sure there wasn't a Murphy bed somewhere in the wall? That no, you just I thought, see, I thought the, the rooms were done in a very like 70s, um, like love beads kind of thing with like clashing patterns, wallpaper and stuff like that. And it, lots of beiges and browns and earth tones. And I thought that the, the in, in spite of the fact that the hotel was very new, it was done in such an authentic way that I thought this room must not have been redone since the 70s, when in fact it was done on that way on purpose, to look that way. It was just done very well. All right. Well, um, enough about the hotel, because you didn't go there to stay in the hotel. Well, but everybody it was wants really to weird know because it was just a big, the party it was just was like. a big like, sunken living room vet, like vat that we all like sat in the middle of, and there was a karaoke thing on the wall and everything. The party was... Um, at Where the, was it? Where? Where was it? Yeah. Uh, Wilshire, Wilshire Boulevard? Yeah, but what was the name of the club? Oh, the, oh, the club, club was on, um, what was it called? The Resident. The Resident, and it was okay. on, um, Wilshire Boulevard, you said. No, 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 that's the hotel one. Oh. Um, Wilshire, uh, no, the, uh, the Resident was on some other boulevard. <laughs> um, right. Google but, it. But, yeah, but it was, it's cool, it reminded me very much of Suzanne's, um, uh, ju the jungle party that she would have uh, on the West Side Highway, remember? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because they had like palm trees and uh, and um, fire pits and things like that. Oh, fun! Um, and then there was, part of the club was outside, part of it was inside, uh, and um, and you know large bath, unisex bathrooms, and um, it was just very cool. And the doormen were all very cool, and the bartenders and the owners were very very nice. Um, I was, so were there protesters in front of the club? No, um, which very much upset us. Now, but um, Danny, the absence of them. Yes, Danny. Um, was prepared for this though, and he brought picket signs. He brought picket signs that um, said "God hates lethal amounts," <laughs> and um, and we I gave them to about twenty people, and we picketed in front of the club for a while. Oh, okay. Um, and then we charged down the street like the like the. Um, Did the press come and take pictures of the protesters? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, you yeah. duped them. Yeah. <laughs> Media hoax. <laughs> Um, and, um, and, you know, that, I actually thought that the party got great publicity because of the, uh, yeah. petition. I mean, I saw at least two articles on the internet, like one LA weekly had that really big article, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think there was one other. The Daily Mail. Okay. And then. And then the Hollywood Reporter. Okay. Well, there you go. So yeah, it was, um, well, they got a lot of. A cornucopia press. Cornucopia publicity. Yes. Um, and, um. So were any young, impressionable LGBT oh my gosh. people. Uh, Ernie, they were endangered at that lined party. up to take my pictures with me, and they were crying and because they were having such. Because they were so scared. They were so scared. Yeah. Kill them. yeah. <laughs> Please don't kill me. I just want you to take my picture with me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was. Um, there were lots of you know, very sincere kind of tears. You know, uh, upset and about a the club. I know. I know. It, was, it is Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, upset about the petition and um, and that kind of thing. And it got a lot of signatures, actually. Yeah, like twenty five hundred, I think. You know, who has time to be signing petitions? Well, only crazy people. <laughs> crazy people with like no jobs and stuff. I mean, I can't even imagine starting a petition and well, getting that. Many the guy who started it claims to be like. Um, and who is he? He claims to be like. Uh, and the, is he fabulous? Mm, I don't. I'm sure not. He he, cla he claims to be one of Angel's friends, but but um, if he that worked the case, then he would know that um, Angel didn't uh, that we didn't cut his head off and things like that that he accused us of in the in the in the article. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, I do. You mean in the petition? Yes, in the petition. I didn't uh, read the whole way through, but like I mean, I thought that the premise was really. Um, 
Shit. very typical of the, of the direction that we're going in in our society because you know, he was claiming that he was worried that young impressionable people would be endangered or could, by hearing another opinion you know or... by being you know hearing or meeting somebody who has uh, a dark past and uh, so it, he took it upon himself to make sure that nobody could right could do that which because, is what happened in, in Germany in the 1930s when they people started not allowing certain galleries to show certain artwork because yeah well I'm not gonna go to but that that's far what it, but that's what it was they were saying that the young and impressionable um, youth of Germany um, were going to be um, made into mental illness ca cases by being shown the um, the Bauhaus you know a lot of the uh, young German artists back then were deemed insane by Hitler well I mean that's not the point that I was gonna make the point that I was gonna make is that's that, the point I'm making that this guy felt that it was there was some kind of danger and I really feel like the only really good parties are where there actually is danger. And uh, so, for example, when I was in Athens, uh, my friend and I were riding around in, in taxis going from one tourist area to the other. And then the taxi drivers who all spoke English were saying, and you see this street and this plaza, don't go there. It's dangerous. There's drug dealers. And all kinds of bad people, and prostitutes, <laughs> young male prostitutes. <laughs> yes. So, so basically, we we're like, oh, really? So we're writing it down in our iPhones, and then later on at night, we are going to the exact places that we were told not to go to, and it was so fun. Yeah. So, um, same thing with these clubs. Like, remember in the '90s, like sometimes you go to these outlaw parties, and it wasn't easy to get into them because you'd be climbing over fences, you could potentially break your leg. Yeah. Or and or it was fall really into the, fall into the river or something. Or, like right. That. Or yeah. like a spike, you know, in a construction zone. Right. So it was fun. Yeah. Or you could potentially go to like say Escalita. Remember the Escalita? Yeah. Like it was this shady uh, Latino club where you could potentially be stabbed if you accidentally like bumped a lesbian the wrong way. Right. And, uh, but it was fun. Yeah. So... Fun being stabbed. Yeah. This, like, this <laughs> idea that, uh, you know, you can't go into a dangerous zone or there have to be completely safe spaces. Completely safe spaces are boring to me. Yeah. So I thought that that was... And anyway, there is no such thing as a completely safe space. No, there really isn't. And uh, so I just thought that this, this guy, although he may have actually been concerned for young people. I don't know I, who he was. I, I, mean, I don't think he was either. I mean... I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt that he was right. genuinely concerned for our LGBTQ youth. Right. As am I. Okay. But I don't think that... I think that these youth are mature enough... These youth... They're mature enough to go to a club and to decide whether they're going to feel safe or unsafe. And I don't think that they're so fragile that they need to be protected by shutting parties down. Otherwise, I could just say, well, I, I mean, because that's the, that argument was used to cut, to shut a lot of gay parties down, you know, from straight people, you know, in the 60s, 50s and 60s. That and argument could be used right now. If I, I were at, if I were at a club and I thought it was too crowded, I could call 911 and tell the fire department, I think it's I think people are in danger here because it's too crowded and shut the party down, which I would never do because uh, only evil promoters who hate other promoters do that. But, um, you know, you could do it. You could, and you could have like a perfectly reasonable and that's what argument was, for doing that's it. That's what he was afraid of, that, that they were afraid of. That's why they didn't announce the um, location of, of the, the second party. Yeah, until like so the, how did you find out about it? No, they it? did, but not until like the last minute because they were afraid that he was going to try and cut it down. Shut it down. Uh, I don't know. It's just like you. He didn't like your message or what you represent, but I really think it's dangerous for people to decide that they're going to shut down messages and uh, venues and events that they don't agree with. Yeah, it's it's chilling. It is chilling. We're going to put a sweater on. We'll be right back. And now a word from our sponsor. Oh, I decided to so back. chilly after all. No, <laughs> we couldn't find any sweaters. I guess we'll have to go buy some. Yeah. So, uh, do we have any um, any um, bitches want to know this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 No. Well, um, I want to know if the person who started that uh, online. You're a bitch. So that that works. Yeah, I want to know if that guy who started the online protest was cute or not. Oh. Um, you never saw his picture. You didn't Google him. You didn't. 
Um, well, okay, there are three of them. And one of them, one of them, either he's cute or his boyfriend is cute. Um, I'll show you right now. And would we have sex with him? Um, I would let him suck my dick. <laughs> um, but... Which one, the boyfriend or the well, one that's who did, what I'm trying to say. I don't know. did the petition? Here, we'll show you. I'll tell you right now. Because there's nothing sexier than a handsome hater. Oh yeah, like a like a like a white power supremacist. <laughs> white supremacist. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. So, needless to say, I was very bit disappointed by the uh, by the Muslim hater who who oh, committed yeah. terror this very upsetting this week because he very was so upsetting. unattractive. I mean, why do they why do they not have better looking terrorists? No. What was his name? Well, I don't know how you say that. Word. Peter Weicher? It's no, it's Weicher or something. Victor. Um, but there's many people know, with that name uh, on I Facebook, so uh, I, I guess we'll never know. No, 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 because well, I found him because he had the um, he had the. Uh, uh, and is he really on his? Is he really a journalist? I mean, you know what journalist would do that? That's not a very journalisty kind of thing to do. Uh, yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, journalism is changing so much now oh, that know. some journalists would think it's perfectly appropriate to launch a petition drive to try to shut something <coughs> down that they don't agree with. Uh, I work for a media organization that forbids me from doing something like that. I could never, yeah, like well, launch a campaign or okay. you know do something that would be so blatantly opinionated that you know I couldn't do it. Couldn't no, do it. No one in my organization is allowed. <laughs> But, you know, I could see people from the blog, like bloggers who consider themselves journalists doing that. Sure. They've oh, done it before, and I think they'll do it again. His, um, either he or the Long story short, we cute. don't know what he looks like. Yeah, but we know either he, but there's, there's, there's four of them. There's him, there's, there's the boyfriend, then there's a guy in Tom's River, and then there's another guy. The, a guy named Carlos who wrote the letter saying, you know, you motherfucker, you let this crack ass nigga come to Los Angeles and you, you fuck with the wrong motherfucker. I'll stab you in your face. Sexy. <laughs> yeah, kind of sexy. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Yep. See bye. you next time.